Hey guys, I'm back with another video and today I'm going to talk about a worthy successor to an extremely popular Shining M3X which replaced the X with an Ultra moniker for a couple of reasons. I have tried uh, pretty much every Shining device by now and if you want to know how this smallest Android powered device is performing then please carry on. One small word of advice, please uh, don't mistake its very small footprint with Poor performance because it does have one ace under its sleeve. When it comes to looks and build quality, I liked everything about that Shining M3X and as they say, if ain't broke, don't fix it, M3 Ultra goes with the same uh, size and build quality. This is their smallest Android powered device and in many cases I would grab uh, this one instead of a Shining M7 because it's so much easier to carry and it's so much smaller. It has the same aluminum frame but a few adjustments have been made relocating its headphone jacks and card slot to be in line with their latest devices. There's one thing that I like the most with Shining devices, putting all their buttons on a single side for a godly layout. It has exactly three buttons, a play pause, next and previews, its volume wheel can work as an on-off button and honestly, I don't think it can get any simpler than this. As a small detour, Hybrid devices have four buttons and bigger fire units have seven buttons versus three buttons on shining units. And for me, that's a big deal as on the go, I want to control my music without taking it outside my pocket. It has a smallish 4.2 inch LCD screen, but thanks to an IPS panel, I believe that the viewing angles are great, uh, colors are vibrant and it's bright enough in sunny days. You can even watch YouTube videos and browse your favorite websites Here's a very cool one, hint hint. But at this screen size, you should probably do that with your smartphone. By far the biggest changes that truly deserve its Ultra moniker can be found inside the unit. This small fellow is being powered by the same Snapdragon 665 that can be found in their flagship devices like M7, like M9, and it makes a world of difference because it's so much faster when browsing around when streaming music via Wi-Fi or playing games or all of the above at the same time. RAM memory went up from 2 gigs to 3 gigs, which should slightly improve multitasking, but ROM memory remained unchanged at 32 gigs. And if you have a huge music collection, then you should probably invest in a high capacity micro SD card. Another substantial improvement was going from an aging Android 7.0 to a much newer Android 10.0 meaning that you can install, run and update all your favorite apps, something that wasn't really the case on the old M3X. And the last improvements were made on the analog side, getting a slightly beefier power output and much better capacitance thanks to those Elna Silmic 2 capacitors, which are currently some of the best electrolytic apps money could buy. Power went up from 240 to 260 milliwatts on its balanced output, and the noise floor went subatomic from 2.4 to just 1.8 microvolts, which sits on the same level with the best of the best M9 DAP. All right, guys, let's hit some eardrums and let's check how it actually performs. I don't know exactly from where all that energy, all that oomph is coming from because it does not sound like the original M3X. I can only speculate that those Rycor op amps, those Elna Silmic 2 caps are giving a huge helping hand because this is very different. I like the original M3X, uh, for me it worked like a jack of all trades, it could easily drive on some uh, desktop planar magnetic headphones, it was pretty much noiseless with all my IMs, but it didn't have a strong character of its own like the newest Shining M7, M6 Ultra had. It didn't try to push dynamics so high and it didn't try to add some refinement in the treble. But I do feel that this one is very different. 
I also tried some of the newest um, FIO and Hybe units, pretty much in the same price bracket like M11S and Hybe RS2, and you can find all those reviews around here. Uh, those had pretty amazing skills, but I do honestly feel that M3 Ultra is simply better. It will push dynamics like crazy. Those base notes will be grumbling inside your school. It's so much better when trying to push uh, bass notes. Uh, it's jumpier, it's more fun sounding, it's denser sounding in the mid-range, and it's more refined sounding in the treble. It's almost unbelievable that this unit is being powered by two ESS Sabre ducks because that treble is so smooth, so relaxing, almost rolled off sounding at times. I went ahead and connected some of the brightest sounding IMs that I have, uh, like uh, Fire FH9, some of the brightest desktop headphones, like entry-level Hyphman headphones, and you know what? It wasn't making me skip those tunes or just lower the volume. I went ahead and put some rock and metal tunes, and those cymbals sounded raw and metallic, but uh, those didn't sound like uh, glass cannons shattering into one million pieces. As M3 Ultra has an outstanding tonal balance, and by that I mean a perfect balance in between bass, mid-range and treble. Probably the biggest highlight for me, something that I never expected to say uh, for such a small device, was its fighter spirit. I don't want to hype things, but I'm not kidding when I'm saying that when it comes to bass punch, when it comes to bass sustain, like sustaining organ pipes, this one will impress you more compared to pricier shining devices like M6 Ultra, like M7. And you can question my judgments, but I cannot deny that uh, it's more fun and it's punchier sounding in the bass versus all of the pricier uh, shining devices. It's an unstoppable force when electronica music starts playing. Dynamics are going through the roof of this one, and it will easily surpass something like a Hybe RS2 and Fire M11S when it comes to simple things like uh, fun factor. So it will impress you a lot more when delivering those uh, painful bass notes, but less so with the speed of sound. And this is where pricier shining devices will impress you more because those have faster decays. For example, double drums felt so clean and thumpy on M7, but just thumpy on M3 Ultra as I didn't find them so clean and defined anymore. Moving on to soundstage, this is another area that felt marginally improved on the M3 Ultra versus the original M3X. Those Elna Silmic 2 capacitors are working as power banks, storing some energy and providing that energy when, when dynamics are asking for. And you can feel that uh, music is livelier, is thumpier, there is more air in between the notes with live recordings on M3 Ultra versus M3X, so I believe that the soundstage improved as well. It has a channel separation of 115 dB on its balanced output versus 75 dB on its regular headphone jack, meaning that uh, if you go a little louder than 75 dB, which is not that loud on, on its regular jack, then the left and right channel will start interfering, and that will have a negative impact on the scale on transparency, on depth, uh, but uh, you don't have that issue on its balanced output because I don't believe you can uh, listen to music louder than 115 dB. In much simpler words, if you want your sounds to escape from your head, if you want a more believable sound, a deeper presentation, a more holographic experience, then go on its balanced headphone output. That will sound uh, better considerably compared to its regular jack, especially if you go a little louder volume-wise. I will briefly touch the subject of its noise floor, uh, because if you have uh, plenty of IMs, especially high-end ultra-sensitive IMs, then uh, this part is uh, very important for you. Now, the original M3X had an amazing noise floor, uh, 2.4 microvolts of noise at max power, uh, balanced out, and with my IMs that wasn't really a problem. I couldn't spot anything playing in the background, it was simply dead silent. But this one has a noise floor of 1.8 microvolts, and that, my friends, is a legendary noise rejection, usually found in multi-thousand uh, desktop headphone amplifiers that use some sort of noise shaping techniques like NFCA or THX amplifiers. So, of course, max power, balance it out, high gain, 
uh, ultra sensitive IMs, no noise, no nothing, nothing playing in the background, and that makes me super happy because we're dealing with an entry to a mid-level digital audio player. And it seems that I have arrived at the only portion where I can rumble about the little Shining M3 Ultra, and that, my friends, is detail retrieval. While it's not really muddy sounding, it's not lacking resolution, for Warden's sake, two ESSA products are still powering this one, but it was not as detailed like the M7, not as transparent and clean like the M6 Ultra, as it goes for a more relaxed uh, presentation. This one won't be giving you, hey look, there's a new sharp detail happening in that corner, hey look, I found that needle in the haystack, it's somewhere around there, hey look, there's a car passing by near our recording studio, it will not give you that, and I see it as both a plus and a minus. It's a minus because it will not give you the last drop of information, all those small intricacies, and it's a plus because it's much smoother, it's more relaxed, there's no listening fatigue. You can listen to this one for hours and hours, something that you cannot do with something like Fire M17, as it's much smoother sounding without stealing your attention from your daily activities and from your work. When it comes to frequency response, it will immediately invade your private space with juicy and thick bass notes, even more so than their M6 Ultra, M7, M3X, there is a longer trail of those bass notes, a much longer decay in a way, uh, to a point of becoming uh, thick and full-bodied. This one will not deliver lightning fast bass notes, and it will not dance around the ring like a lightweight uh, boxer, but it will surely pound like a heavyweight boxing champion. So there is more quantity rather than quality, and you can feel that with everything, not only with electronic tunes. Another highlight for me is something that usually is not happening on ESS Saber uh, power to devices was a warm, seducing and creamy mid-range performance. Think about the opposite of thin, lifeless and boring and that's exactly how M3 Ultra sounded in the mid-range. If you listen to a lot of blues, jazz, acoustic stuff, rock music, then M3 Ultra will impress you right away with a natural mid-range performance. This kind of mid-range is a lot to my liking because uh, it connects you with your music on the emotional side rather than on the technical side of music listening. Its triple performance is again going against the rules by sounding fairly extended, clean, but also harsh-free. It was more like relaxed, easygoing, smooth sounding, it was more refined sounding in here, easily domesticating even the brightest and the wildest sounding IMs and desktop headphones. Treble heads probably won't be impressed that much, but music lovers that care for a perfect balance in between bass, mid-range and treble will definitely appreciate a lifelike timbre. In the end, this is not the most technical, the fastest, the cleanest, the most resolving sounding digital audio player out there, but it's definitely the smallest goosebump machine that I have experienced this year. Think about wild toy taps, about uh, thick and powerful bass notes about creamy mid-range delivery without any kind of uh, brightness or listening fatigue. It has the fastest system on chip of the moment and it does feel like a modern smartphone when multitasking. I do think its pluses heavily outweighed its minuses and at this price point I don't think you can find a better sounding digital audio player and that's my honest personal opinion. Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed my review, don't forget to like and subscribe, and as usual, listen to my tunes, and I'll see you around.